The House of Squibb presents Academy Award. Tonight, Cary Grant and Ann Todd in Suspicion. Every week, Squibb brings you Hollywood's finest. The great picture plays, the great actors and actresses, techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous Golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. For generations, the House of Squibb has been known for the high quality and unfailing dependability of its products, each the result of a never-ending quest for perfection. Today, the great family of Squibb products reflects the tremendous advance of science in its contribution to human health and well-being. The name Squibb stands for Progress Through Research. Squibb is a name you can trust. Tonight, Squibb brings you the thrilling mystery, Suspicion, the picture which was nominated in 1941 for three Academy Awards. As our star tonight, you will hear Cary Grant, who, as Best Actor of the Year, has twice been nominated for the Academy Award, recreating his original screen role. Appearing with him is the lovely British stage and screen star, Anne Todd. And now, Academy Award. You've made me know the meaning of the word ecstasy. When I married Johnny. Oh, I'd heard things about him. That he was careless, which I knew meant carefree. That he was unreliable, which I knew meant he was different from any other man in the world. But naturally, I didn't hear what the looks implied. Well, I wouldn't have cared even if I'd seen them. The smug looks, the I told you so's, and even the pitying looks from the few who seemed to care. Well, Mrs. Aysgarth, are you getting used to being a wife? Oh, darling, it's wonderful. Yes, well, let's see. It all started at the Hunt Ball, then we got married, then it's kind of a blur. A blur of Venice, Naples, Capri, Monte Carlo, Nice, Paris, and now this wonderful, heavenly, adorable house. Oh, Johnny, you sure we can afford all this? <laughs> uh, Lena, one doesn't talk of money in paradise. A telegram, sir. Oh, my, speaking of paradise, let's see who wants to spoil it. Is it bad news, darling? No, no, just from an old friend of mine, stupid fellow. He wants a thousand pounds. You couldn't spare a thousand, could you, dear? A thousand? What's he wanted for? Hanged if I know. Probably because I borrowed it from him. You borrowed it? Why? Well, because I was going on a honeymoon with the loveliest girl in the world, and I wanted her to be happy. Was she happy? But, but didn't you have any money of your own? Not a shilling. Johnny, are you broke? Oh, monkey face. I've been broke all my life. I know you didn't marry me for my money. You could have done much better elsewhere. My income will never pay for all this. Never. Hmm. Hmm. Well, what about your father? Oh, I couldn't ask father or mother. But you wouldn't actually want to live on your wife's allowance, would you? No, darling. Naturally not. Well, then. Well, I suppose if the worst comes to the worst, that is, if there's no other way out, why, I'll probably have to... What? Borrow some more. Johnny... There's going to be no more borrowing or gambling. <laughs> what else is there to do? You've got to go to work. Uh, work? Mm-hmm. Well, you mean put on old clothes, go out with a shovel? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be flippant, darling. They're all sorts of jobs. Oh, all right, darling. I'm broad-minded. Let's have some tea. Hey, we can make out a list of jobs. You know, I think that'll be fun. <laughs> It meant so much to me that Johnny took a position. I think you will understand. It seemed to help me push the sneers and the knowing smiles back into the dark. I don't know exactly what Johnny does, but he has a job in the office of a Captain Melbeck, a sort of distant cousin of his. I was at home waiting for Johnny when a stranger called. I say, you must be old Johnny's wife. Yes, I am. Uh, didn't he uh, tell you about me? 
Uh, I'm Beaky. Beaky? Oh, are you Beaky? Yeah, that's what they called me at school. Beaky Thwaite. Oh, I've heard so much about you. And Johnny told me about you, too. Uh, ran into him at the, uh, at the Newbury races last week. The races? Oh, put my foot in it as usual, eh? I, I mean, uh, didn't he tell you? Johnny has a job. He couldn't have been at the races. Besides, he stopped betting. Oh, he has, has he? Oh, not Johnny. Great lad, eh, what? Well, you, you, you mustn't mind him cutting up. That's, that's what makes him Johnny. Besides, he thinks you're a topper. Oh, yes, he does. I think so, too. Eh, hey, what? Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Thwaite? I don't see why not. Uh, is anything wrong? Well, there were two Queen Anne chairs here this morning before I went out. Uh, they've uh, uh, disappeared, have they? Apparently. Were they expensive? Yes, very. Museum pieces. <laughs> Well, what's the matter? Oh, that Johnny, he'll be the death of me yet. Don't you understand? No, I don't. I'll give you 20 to 1, Johnny sold them. Sold them? What for? What for? For money, of course. Chap's got to pay his racing bets, hasn't he? And Johnny lost a packet at Newbury. I don't believe you. Oh, put my foot in it again, have I? My dear girl, uh, uh what's your name? Uh, Lena. My dear Lena, you simply haven't got acquainted with old Johnny. Why, at school there wasn't one chap who's spending money Johnny purloined who didn't forgive him in the end. Why, you'll forgive him anything when you know him better. Well, Beaky. Well, well, old Bean. Oh, how's my darling monkey face? Uh, hello, Johnny. Ask him about the chairs, old girl. Hey, what are you whispering about, Beaky? I just want her to ask you about the chairs that disappeared. Oh, yeah, well, you would. <laughs> So you two have discovered my iniquity, eh? Well, some American chap stopped by. Admired them so much, I just had to let him have them. <laughs> Johnny, you're such a wonderful liar. Yes, well, look, you two. Forget the Inquisition. Now, sit down, both of you. Anywhere. Lena, wait till you hear this. Now, shut up, Beaky. Lena, you remember that necklace you admired in the shop window a month ago? Here, it's yours. Oh, Johnny, I... Yes, did... my friends. The Grand National was run today. I happen to have backed the winner. A ten-to-one shot, ladies and gentlemen, ten-to-one, and I had 200 pounds on him. By Jove, ten-to... Why, that's... that's 2,000 pounds. Oh, that's amazing, Beaky. Hey, monkey face, you're not smiling. Come on, smile. Where did you get the 200 pounds? Oh, now, really, I say, what a question. Darling, where did you get it? Oh, well, you know very well there was no America, and I got it for the chairs, of course. You sold the chairs to gamble all your money on a horse? Not exactly. You see, I owed some money to the bookies. <laughs> Johnny's such a lad. Eh? Now, darling, be practical. Come on, give us a smile. Yes, come along, old girl. Uh, Johnny, you tickle her chin while I make faces. Think that'll work? Yes, yes. Now, more tickle. Okay. Any results yet, Beaky? Not yet, old bean. Wait, mm. I'll make a sound like an owl. Yeah, let's that try that. always gets them. Mm. Oh, wait a minute, wait. I forgot something. Here you are. A receipt from a certain shop. Payment in full for a certain pair of Queen Anne chairs. They'll be delivered within the hour. Oh, look at that, Johnny. She's smiling. Oh, Johnny. Here's to the famous Johnny Asgar. Beakers up, brandy to the bottom. <coughs> oh, Johnny, he's choking. Do something. It's no use, darling. I've seen this happen before. It'll either kill him or go away by itself. I think one of these days it will kill him. Johnny, Beaky, an old friend of yours. How can you take that attitude? And you sat there and let him drink all the brandy he wanted. Oh, what is the matter with me? Johnny, Johnny, I do trust you. I do believe in you, but... I met one of the sneering faces today. She made it quite clear that you hadn't given up gambling. She told me she saw you each afternoon at the races. Johnny, perhaps I shouldn't, but I must find out. I must. Good afternoon, Mrs. Esgar. Oh, Captain Melbeck, I came to see my husband, but since he isn't here... Well, after all, you are his cousin as well as his employer, and I... Well, I'm... I'm just terribly worried. Yes, I understand that. But on the other hand, I told him I wouldn't prosecute, of course. Pros... I don't understand. What on earth are you talking about? Well, how does he get away with it? What reason did he give you when I discharged him? When did you discharge him? Six weeks ago. We had an unexpected audit, and the account showed a deficit of 2,000 pounds. And when I looked into Johnny's records... <laughs> Thank you. 
Here, look at the photograph of the cliffs, Beaky. We could put the hotel up here. Perfect. Then the little houses could go down on the beach there. Hello, you two. What's going on? Oh, hello, monkey face. Sit down, darling. Beaky and I are organizing a real estate company. We're going to buy up this beautiful piece of land right by the sea. Well, have you found somebody to put up the money? Oh, yes. Who? Me, old girl. I... I see... Uh, well, well, the idea is mine. The capital is Beaky's. You see, Beaky bars against some securities in Paris, and then we issue stock. The whole company, of course, would be in my name. It's very simple. Does Beaky understand it? Oh, yeah, yes, I think so. Uh, Captain Melbick's on the phone, sir. Oh. I'll take it in the study. Excuse me for a moment. Beaky. Yes, my dear? You're being unfair to Johnny. What? Oh, I say, now, that's a hot one. Why, he, he, he's president of the whole new thing. He, he, he gets a salary. He can write checks. That's just what I mean. Well, what's wrong about that? Oh, there you are, old boy. You know, Lena's been telling me that you're a, a bit soft in the head. Not a, not a good risk and all that rot. I heard through the door. Well, how about cleaning up, old boy? Nearly time for dinner. You know your room. Better hurry, him. Huh? Oh, all right. I won't be there. Well? Lena... Have you any regrets that you married me? No. Why do you ask that? Then show me the courtesy of not interfering in my affairs. Johnny, I'm not interfering in your affairs. You are. And I'm warning you, stop it. Do you hear? Do you hear? Oh, Johnny, please. Please. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. But it's pretty obvious it's no garland of roses to be Mrs. John Aesgarth. Johnny, do you have any regrets? Monkey face... Marrying you is the one thing I've never changed my mind about. I want nothing but to spend the rest of my life with you. And if you die first... Yes? If I die first? What about you? I couldn't fall out of love with you if I tried. Have you tried? Yes. Today, when I found out about Captain Melvick. Oh. Oh, that. Well, listen to me. If I had the money, I could go ahead with this development. It's really a wonderful spot. And you think Beaky has the money? Of course. Ah. Well, I guess that's over. Over? Why? What's happened? Nothing's happened. I'm calling the deal off. Does Beaky know about this? Not yet. Here I am, darlings, and ravenous. When do we dine, eh? <laughs> Personally, old Bean, I can't see anything wrong with the scheme. But if you say it's no use going ahead with it, well, uh, don't let's go ahead. Well, Beaky, I'm not going to take the responsibility of calling the whole thing off without proving to you the scheme's no good. Now, you'll have to go up there to the cliffs tomorrow and take a look. Well, old Bean, if you say it's no good, that satisfies me. It should satisfy him. Why does Johnny insist? Oh, no, I would have liked What's in his mind? Him. He's desperate for money. If he would sell the chair, embezzle from Captain Melbick, would he stop it? No, no, that's preposterous. Yet he said, if I were to die... I say, Johnny, I really don't want to go up there in the morning. It'll be nasty and cold. Nasty, cold, foggy. Cliffs are high and treacherous. Beaky is no match for Johnny. The earlier the better. There won't be so much traffic on the roads. Near the cliffs, and they'll be they alone. To Nobody to watch. Like Beaky will get out of the car. Then Johnny, so we'll they'll walk near the edge of the cliff. The Beaky will peer over too near, too near. And suddenly he will... Go over. I say, getting up for me is murder, old chap. Murder. Murder. No. 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 Ah! I say, I do believe she's fainted, old Bean. Now, now, whatever do you suppose could be wrong? <laughs> Before continuing with part two of Academy Award, we wish to thank RKO Pictures for making this story available. RKO are also the producers of Sister Kenny, starring Rosalind Russell and Alexander Knox. And now the House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award, starring Cary Grant and Ann Todd in Suspicion. A 
silly phrase from childhood keeps going through my head. Gruesome shapes and things horrid. Why can't I get Johnny out of my mind? Not the laughing, easy-going Johnny I know, but a sinister Johnny. I got up early, took my car. I drove out to the cliff and found the tire marks of Johnny's car. They led right up to the edge of the cliff. My heart stood still. Where the tire marks ended, the cliff had caved in and was gone. I don't remember how I got home. Johnny, where's Beaky? Well, hello, my girl. I'm here. Oh, thank God. Johnny! Why, monkey face, you're breaking my bones with that hug. After all, I've only been gone a few hours. Seems like a thousand. Seems that way to me, too. Oh, shut up. It was nothing, Beaky. Well, I nearly lost my life. Do you call that nothing? You nearly lost your life? Yes, I, I, I was turning the car near the edge of the cliff. Was Johnny in the car? Uh, no, uh, he was admiring the view. Well, I was backing up, backing right up to the edge. If Johnny hadn't seen it and, and, and taken a leap and grabbed the brake, uh, well, by Jove, I shouldn't be here. Johnny saved your life? He certainly did. Came Johnny close to losing his own, too. Oh, Johnny. How can I ever tell you what this means to me? To you? It meant something to me, too, by Harry. Ought to give a chap a reward, eh, what? Oh, now it's getting interesting. Why can't he come to Paris with me? I think old Johnny needs a holiday. Paris? Yes, my securities are there. I think I'd better fly over to dissolve the corporation. I'll treat Johnny to the trip. Oh, the cad seems to forget I'm a married man, darling. But then I might toss a few things into a bag and drive as far as London with him. What about that, monkey face? Oh, ripping. Oh, do let him, monkey, uh, Bina. <laughs> well, I don't see how I can stop him. Good. Great. Let's pack, old Bean. Mrs. A's gone? Yes. I'm Hodgson, inspector of the county police. I understand your husband is not in, madam. No, he's up in London for a few days. I believe you know a Mr. Thwaite. Why, of course, he's a very good friend of my husband. Well, Mrs. Asgoth, Mr. Thwaite is dead. Dead? Died in Paris. This is such a shock. You see, I... we knew him. I'm sorry to have to break it to you, Mrs. Asgoth. It seems Mr. Thwaite was in the company of another gentleman by the name of Allbeam or Holbeam. There was some sort of a drinking bet between them. This other gentleman ordered a large beaker of brandy for Mr. Thwaite and then left. Would you or your husband happen to know any friend of Mr. Thwaite's who would answer to a name such as Allbeam or Holbeam? Um, I'm afraid not. The papers were found on Mr. Thwaite, which would indicate that he and your husband had formed a corporation. My husband had planned a real estate development for Mr. Thwaite. Mr. Thwaite had gone to Paris to dissolve it. I see. Well, thank you, Mrs. Aysgott. Sorry I had to bother you. When your husband returns, uh, by the way, do you expect him? This evening, Inspector. Would you ask him to ring me at the station? Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello? Hogarth Club, London. Oh, may I speak to Mr. Aysgarth, please? Yes. Oh, when do you expect him? He left yesterday. Thank you. Oh, it's you. Yes. So you've heard about Biggie? Yes. Dead. Johnny, the inspector wants you to phone him. Captain Melbick phoning, sir. Oh, yes? Yeah? Well, tell him I got his note. Tell him I'll take care of the matter within two weeks, as he requests. Yes, sir. The matter? The debt, monkey face. He wants his money. And you can get it in two weeks? I'm trying. Now, suppose we call it a day. But, Johnny, you have to call the inspector. Let's call it a day, darling. I'm tired. Dead tired. <laughs> All night I lay awake, my mind whirling with suspicions. And suddenly I remembered Isabel, who was a writer of murder fiction. I remembered Johnny asking her questions a few evenings ago. Unusual questions. Had he followed up those questions? 
Why did Johnny want to know so much about murder and the ways of committing murder? Well, since you flattered me by telling me you've already read my latest story, ask me your questions. Isabel, why did Johnny come to see you? Oh, my dear, Johnny is interested in the way in which we poor writers evolve our little plots. Well, naturally, we talk to so many things. I see. Did he... Did he ask you any particular questions? Questions like, well, on unusual ways in which a character might commit a crime? Well, yes, we did talk of that. You know Johnny. You can't resist him. He makes you want to tell all your trade secrets. I see. Oh, I remember now. Johnny was simply fascinated by one of my pet theories. An untraceable poison. Oh, was he? Has Johnny been having nightmares? Talking in his sleep, my dear? Yes, yes, Isabel. That's it. Nightmares. Oh, Mrs. Aysgarth. This letter just came for Mr. Aysgarth. I was going to bring it up. Oh, thank you. I'll take it to myself. Yes, ma'am. Durential Insurance Company, Manchester. Replying to your inquiry regarding a loan of £2,000 against policy 167895. Regret loan cannot be made. Under terms of policy, payment can only be made in the event of the death of your wife. Event of the death of your wife. <laughs> Johnny. Yes, monkey face? I saw Isabel today. I didn't know you were so interested in murder, mistress. Uh, yes, yes. I borrowed one of her books. Terrible bore, too. There was a lot of muck about using an untraceable poison. What does that mean, untraceable? Well, you can't find it on the corpse, so you look high and low. Yes? Are you interested in murder, too, dear? Yes, I... I'm getting to be. Hmm had quite an interesting chat with Isabel that day. She thinks I couldn't commit a murder if I tried a hundred years. Something in my face. What do you think, darling? I... I don't know, Johnny. Johnny... Have you finished breakfast? Yes. Oh, are you speaking to me this morning? Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny. I don't know what got into me last night. I must be developing nerves. Oh, I don't mind being asked to sleep in my dressing room, even when my wife locks the door between. Some husbands might, but not me. Oh, really, Johnny? I'm, I'm just run down. I, I think I'd better go down to Mother's for a few days. She asked you? Why, yes, I... Yes, she called this morning. Must have been very early. I didn't hear it. Very well. I'll drive you. Oh, you needn't drive me. I can take the... I prefer to drive you. That door on your side keeps springing open. I must get it fixed someday. Please, do you have to drive so fast? Great morning for a bit of speed. Look out! Shortcut here, almost missed the turn. What's that door? Ah! Lena, <laughs> come back here, you crazy fool. Where are you going? Lena! Oh, Lena, what's got into you? Let me go, Johnny. Let me go, please. Oh, go. stop it, you little fool. Stop it. Now Johnny, listen to me. Stop it. How much do you think a man can bear? You turn me out of your room. You go running away to your mother's, and now you cringe as though you hate me. You're my wife, Lena. I, I thought I, I... You almost killed us both back there in the car because you had to pull away when I reached out to save you. Well, you won't have to put up with me anymore. Johnny. Where are you going, Johnny? First time driving you onto your mother's. And then what? You needn't worry. I'll never bother you again. You mean you're going to? Is that why you were looking up that poison in Isabel's book? You were going to 
kill yourself. Oh, Johnny, my darling, no. Oh, don't worry. I saw that was a cheap way out. I'm going back to see it through, Lena. Prison term and everything. Prison? You mean Melbeck? That money you took? Yes. I can't pay it back. I made a last try to raise the money when I went away with Beaky. To Paris? No, no. I went up to Liverpool to borrow on your insurance. You mean you were in Liverpool when Beaky... You didn't go to Paris? I wish I had. I'd never have let some idiot give poor old Beaky that brandy. Oh, Johnny. I've been such a fool. If only I'd realized. If I'd been as close to you as I should have, you might have confided in me more. But things are going to be different now, Johnny. People don't change overnight. I'm no good, Lena. Oh, darling, let's turn back. Go home and see it all through together. Mm -mm. It won't work. I'm taking you on to your mother's. It will work. I know it. Let me go back with you. You don't belong in this. But I do. I won't let you shut me out. Please, Johnny. Turn the car around and go home. Please. No, Lena, no. We're saying goodbye. Yes. I know, Johnny. But it's going to take so many, many years to say goodbye. Every time you see and hear your favorite picture star, enjoy that something extra that only the best can bring. For generations, people have felt that way about the House of Squibb. They expect more from any Squibb product, and they get more. There's a plus in Squibb Dental Cream, for example, that millions are enjoying every day. For it's more than a completely safe and effective aid in cleaning your teeth. Squibb Dental Cream is refreshment in a tube, a frosty, minty, flavor sensation. Whenever you want to feel your best and look your best, wake up your mouth with Squib Dental Cream. Use it before every engagement for a breath of freshness in your smile. Get Squib Dental Cream tomorrow. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Next Wednesday, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Award starring Olivia de Havilland in Cheers for Miss Bishop. Today's performance of Suspicion was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Cary Grant may currently be seen in RKO's Alfred Hitchcock production, Notorious. And Todd appeared through the courtesy of David O. Selznick and may soon be seen in the Selznick production, The Paradigm Case. Nigel Bruce was unable to appear tonight because of illness. The part of Vicky on tonight's performance was played by Carl Harbert. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next Wednesday at the same time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Award, presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.